Before you're seated, before you're seated, this is home for me. This is home. Before you sit down, this is home. Esto es para mi casa. And man, there's a Rosetta Stone anointing in this place today, right? <laughs> All that Spanish. But y'all, this is last year I expressed it, and but y'all, we are living in some cuckoo for Cocoa Puff times. And it's faith that will enable us to overcome. And, and one of the generals, I am grateful that on this planet, in these difficult days, in this difficult season, there are just anointed generals in the kingdom. Aren't you grateful that this man of God right here give it up for a general, a spiritual dad, Dr. Bill Winston, the Winston family, and for having the courage to speak faith, faith in this difficult season. Uh, but you're going to be, go ahead, sit down for a second. I'm, the first point of the message is don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's point number one. Point number two, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Point number three, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Which means what? Let not your heart be troubled, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. God's not done with us yet. We're about to see something amazing. I want to share with you what God's spirit place in my heart. Open up your Bibles quickly. Honored to be with you. Wow. Luke chapter five, verse six. We're gonna do two verses. We're gonna juxtapose, do a comparative analysis of, of two verses and then focus on one meta narrative from John chapter 21. But Luke chapter five, verse six. This is the story of when Jesus first encountered what would soon emerge as his team, his disciples. In that initial encounter, something interesting happened. When they had done this, Jesus, as you well know, saw them, they were fishing. They had caught absolutely nada. Jesus instructs them to cast the net on the right side. They catch fish. And then Luke 5, 6. When they had done this, obeying the instructions of Jesus, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. Luke 5, 6. Show that, George, here. This is a net. If you, if you could see here, it's broken. That's Luke 5, 6. Three and a half years later, same Jesus same disciples, same word with a different outcome. Now, how in the world can you reconcile that recipe? Same Jesus gives out the same word to the same people. And then here's the outcome. Let me read it for you. John 21, 11. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net had not been torn. The net did not break. Why would the Holy Spirit, with great intentionality, make certain that the Apostle John would include the fact that this time the net did not break? Three and a half years prior, same group, the net broke three and a half years later the net did not break so I want to speak to you on the subject matter same God same word different outcome the subtext in this faith conference committed to seeing miracles this time the net will not break We, we don't want to be presumptuous, but I'm inclined to do this. Can you somehow, with all the polity of the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago, can you just look at someone with social distancing and everything you have and tell that neighbor, this time the net will not break? <laughs> can you tell the other one, the other person, the one that doesn't want you to tell them anything, tell that person. <laughs> tell them, this time the net will not break. Matter of fact, do it one more. Tell the neighbor behind you, tell him this time, whatever broke before, 
whatever was lost before, whatever perished before, this time, tell them I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago. This time, the net will not break. If you believe that praise like you know it's not going to break. This time the net will not break. This time the net will not break. Number one, if you're taking any notes and good luck with that. Numero uno, set the net as your default setting. What does that mean? Your default settings will define your recovery. What do you mean, Pastor Sam? All right, now that we juxtapose Luke 5, 6 and John 21, we're going to have to look deep into John 21. What took place in three and a half years that resulted in a different outcome? Here we go. And this is John 21, verse 3. This is after the resurrection. Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They were confused. This is post-resurrection. They're having these issues. What happens next? There was this time of what happens next. I mean, not understanding fully the instructions of Jesus, breathing in the Holy Spirit. Oh, they, get, they were just confused. Estaban confundido. Even the whole wait for me. I mean, I mean totally confused. So, Peter said, let's go fishing. And, and everyone followed. I love this charismatic leadership trait of Peter. Peter, who denied Jesus three times, is still a de facto leader of the clan. Because once you're anointed to lead, even when you don't want to lead, people will follow you. <laughs> so, so here's this fallen leader, and, and we'll go out, and they all followed him. They all went out, it says, and fished through the night, John 21, verse 3, but they caught, they caught nothing. Let me discuss with you briefly the false settings. On your smartphone, on your iPhone, and if you're, if you're not born again, you have an Android. Um, oh, all right, sorry, forgive me. That's a bit too far. You're slightly born again. All right. La sangre de Cristo. On your smartphone, on your, on your laptop, the computer in your vehicle, in many of our home appliances, by the way, we have what is known as default settings. Default settings refers to the original program operational set. Simply stated, there's a virus, no pun intended, if something crashes, you can always go back. The disciples went back to doing what they were doing before they met Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the disciples went back to their default setting. The disciples went back to doing what they were doing before they met Jesus. Permit me to reiterate, they went back to doing what they were doing before they met Jesus. And what did they catch? And that's the message. They went back and caught what? This is what happens when you go back. You catch what? There's nothing back. There. There's nothing when you go back. There's nothing when you look back. There's nothing when you think back. There's nothing. There's nothing when you speak back. There's nothing when you text back. There's nothing when you search back. There's nothing when you Google back. There's nothing when you swipe back. There's nothing in your past. There's nothing of any significant value when you go back to what you were doing before you met Jesus. There's a, I'm going to get in trouble here, but I come from California, so I don't really care. I, I've been locked down for a year and a half with every restrictive measure on the book. So the moment I leave California, I feel like a free man in the name of Jesus. So here it is. There's an attempt by the enemy to make us go back. There's an attempt by the enemy, even in the season, corporately and individually, to prompt us to digress, to go back. There's nothing in the past behavior. There's nothing in that previous relationship. There's nothing in that old job. There's nothing in that old way of thinking. There's nothing. It's time to change your default setting to Jesus. It's time. It's time to change your default setting to faith. Forget what happened long ago. Isaiah 43, 18. Philippians 3, 13. Forget the past. Focus on moving forward. Don't think there. Don't speak there. Don't live there. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Don't even pray.
spray there. There's nothing back there. And I'm here to declare by faith in the name of Jesus that everyone in this auditorium and the thousands that are streaming right now, I don't care what devil rises up against you, you are not going back. You're not going back to poverty. You're not going back to victimization. You're not going back to depending on man more than you depend on God. You are not going back. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I'm not going back to Egypt. You got to say this like you believe it and give the enemy the biggest migraine. Say, I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going back to the old me. I'm not going back to being a victim. I'm not going back to perpetual brokenness. I'm not going back to defeat. I'm not going back to failure. I'm not going back to toxic relationships. As for me and my house, my children and my children's children, and my children's children's children. We will never go back. We will move forward in the name of Jesus and occupy everything God has for us. Your faith is thrusting you forward. Forward, why? Because you are not where you are. You are not how you are. You are not what others did to you and you are not what you did to yourself. You are who God says you are. You are what God says you are. It's not about where you are in life, it's about who you are in Christ. And when you know who you are in Christ, you will never be held back by where you are in life. Your identity in Christ will bring an end to your captivity in life. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand. So don't overthink it, man, because sometimes it's the overthinking that impedes the overcoming. So do not overthink, overcome. Change your default setting. Number two, your net will determine your catch. I will repeat that. Your net will determine your catch. One more time. Luke 5, when he first encountered his disciples, hey guys, what y'all doing? We're fishing, fishing all night. Really? Cast the net on the right hand side. They caught so much that the net broke. Three and a half years later, after walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, being in the presence of Jesus, receiving the word of Jesus and the word that was Jesus, as their faith grew, what happens next? The, this net, the net does not break. It's the net. You need something to catch something. Here it is. John 21. At dawn, Jesus was standing there on the shoreline. The disciples didn't even realize it was him. He called out to them and said, guys, did you catch any fish? Not a thing. This is John 21, three and a half years later. Jesus shouted to them, throw your net over the starboard side and you'll catch some. So they did as he said, and they caught so many fish, they couldn't even pull in the net, Right? So full, but it didn't break. They wanted to catch fish, so they had a net. You need something to catch something. The Bible says there are things you need in order to catch, acquire, activate other things. There are people that would like to catch fish without a rod, a bait, or a net. Good luck with that. You need, you need faith to move mountains. According to scripture, you need holiness to see God. You need courage to speak truth. You need to confess Jesus to be saved. You need the blood of the lamb to overcome. You need to pray for God's will to be done. You need love to change the world. You need something to catch something. Faith is a net. Praise is a net. Worship is a net. The word of God is a net. The name of Jesus is a net. Without a net, you can't ask for fish. So with great due deference, if you don't have faith, stop asking for a breakthrough. 
If you don't have faith, stop asking for the healing. If you don't have faith, stop asking for favor. You need something to catch something. It is impossible to please God without anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Your net will determine your catch. Your faith will determine your future. There is a battle going on right now. There is a battle. There is a battle and the battle is between your mind and your mantle. I will repeat that for the hearing impaired. The battle is between your mind and your mantle. The battle is between the thoughts in your head and the calling upon your life. The battle is between anxiety and anointing. The battle is between destiny and depression. The battle is between fear and faith. The battle is between advancing or retreating. But praise be to God. Praise be to God. The battle has already been won. I said praise be to God, Chicago. The battle has already been won. Colossians 2.15, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus. The battle has been won. The battle, how do we know the battle has been won? The apostle Paul tells us the Holy Spirit ensures the victory. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee that the battle has been won. The Zechariah began in the Old Covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Not by might, nor by power, but... And even in the midst of COVID, even in the midst of fear, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. The Spirit of God assures the battle. Oh, I want to remind everyone here, this is why we can't drink the Kool-Aid of what we're reading and what we're seeing. It's not that we're in denial. Christians don't live in denial. People of faith don't live in denial, but we have faith. We're not living in denial, we're, we're, but we understand we're cognizant of the reality out there. But we know that the Spirit of God secures the battle. And we are people of faith because we are people of the Spirit. And I want to remind everyone here and everyone streaming right now, the Holy Spirit is still more powerful than COVID. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't care what happens on my Facebook account. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than COVID. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than the Delta variant or any other variant that can emerge tomorrow, next year, or a decade from now. The Spirit of God is still more powerful than anything that can come or originate or evolve on this planet. If you believe it, shout like you know the Spirit of God. with that spirit would stand up right now and start declaring all upon this nation all upon this world if we would stand up and proclaim by faith through Christ oh man I want you to get this there is still power power in the name of Jesus driven by that spirit we are people of faith I want you to know that this is not religion we have power we have authority in Christ we're not just any people we are people of faith we are followers of Christ we are the church of Jesus somebody pray like you have that spirit somebody prophesy like you have that spirit somebody rebuke devils and demons like you have that spirit Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not a denomination. The Holy 
Holy Spirit is not a network. The Holy Spirit is not an emotion. The Holy Spirit is not a moment. The Holy Spirit is not a conference. The Holy Spirit is not an ideology or a philosophy. The Holy Spirit is not an app. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful person and force on planet Earth today. Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, 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 so, I'm not sorry. Are we streaming? We are? Cameraman, give me a tight shot again. Let me get formal about this. You ready? No joke. I've lived this. So with all certainty, I won't make it clear. If all these nations streaming around the world, beginning with ours, I want to make it clear. There's not an executive order. A Supreme Court decision. A legislative initiative. A law. Or a social media campaign. That has the power to stop the Holy Spirit from moving. The White House can't stop them. Congress can't stop them. The courts can't stop them. Facebook can't stop them. Google can't stop them. You can't cancel the Holy Spirit. You can't deplatform the Holy Spirit. Somebody praise like you believe it. Somebody worship like you believe it. I said it last year. I'll say it again. We are about to see more people come to Jesus as Lord and Savior than ever before in human history. It's the spirit of Romans 8, 11, according to the apostle Paul. The same identical spirit that raised Jesus lives inside of you. This is why this time the net will not break. If Jesus came out of the tomb, you can come out of everything. I'm going to repeat that one more time. The same identical spirit, not a clone, not a derivative, not a cousin, not a similar, not a kindred spirit, but the same identical spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. If Jesus came out of the tomb, you can come out of everything. With that spirit, you will come out of addiction. With that spirit, you come out of depression, anxiety, bondage, shame, the past, fear. And tonight in Chicago, I don't see people bound by fear. I see worshipers driven by faith. Matthew 21, 22. This is your net. Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. 1 Corinthians 2, 5. That your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 John 5, 4, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. You have a net. Your net is called faith. Faith in Christ, faith of Christ. I have faith. Raise your right hand. Let's do it. I'm just making declarations here. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I have the net and it's called faith. It's the faith of Jesus, the faith in Jesus. I have faith that my entire family will be saved. I have faith that divine health will define me. I have faith that this global pandemic will be replaced by a global awakening and revival. So it, 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 you... You could push back. There could be somebody on social media right now going, but what about COVID? The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Things are impossible. Well, God is attracted to impossible circumstances. From Genesis to Revelation, show him a barren womb. Show him a closed door. Show him a broken heart. Show him a bad medical report. Show him an empty bank account. 
Show him a dysfunctional family. Show him a world in the midst of a pandemic and get ready for one thing. God's about to show up. Why? Because Luke 137 says, nothing is impossible with God. And the other version that we're familiar with, the word of God will never fail. The word of God will never fail. He gave Abraham a word, it never failed. He gave Moses a word, it never failed. He gave Joshua a word, it never failed. He gave Hannah a word, it never failed. He gave Elijah a word, it never failed. And he gave us not just a word, he gave us the word. John 1.1 1, 1, and that word has never failed. Oh, your families are about to, I, I'm gonna just speak prophetically right now. Your families, our families are about to give birth to something amazing. Even in the midst of this pandemic coming out of COVID and it will come to an end. Pastor Sam, how, you know, how do you know COVID will come to an end? Oh, because the, <laughs> Porque la Biblia dice, los cielos y la tierra pasará, mas mi palabra no pasará. How do you know, Pastor Sam, that it will come to an end? Because the Bible says the only thing that will never end is the word of God, is a testimony of the glory of Christ. Everything else will come to an end. The impossible will take place. He is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. And number three, quickly, do not grant everyone access to your net. Let me make it legal. John 21, verse eight. The other disciples brought the boat to shore, dragging their catch of fish. Keep on reading John 21. You would see how they collaborated for the purpose. The catch was so great. You, your, your net is broken, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, sunshine. So the catch was so great that it, matter of fact, let go of that broken net. That season is over. <laughs> Anybody here willing to let go of your broken nets? That season is over. I'm prophesying to you right now. I'm telling you no joke. After this conference, your net will never break again in Jesus' name. <laughs> No, I'm telling you right now, the net of your relationship, your finances, your faith, your future, the things that used to break before, they will never break again. That season of broken nets is over. But this time, this season, it's not your, your normal cup of tea. You're going to need some help. In John 21, the catch was so great that no one of them was able to carry it by themselves. Matter of fact, Peter, they dragged it. That's how heavy it was. Don't leave your catch behind. Don't abandon it. The problem is that we try to drag the net all by ourselves. The problem is that we think we are sufficiently strong enough to do it by ourselves. This life's journey was never meant to be traveled in solitude. Listen to me, from Adam and Eve in the garden to Jesus commissioning the apostles two by two. Purpose cannot be fulfilled without partnerships. I'm going to repeat that. Purpose cannot be fulfilled without partnerships. In order to fulfill your purpose, you must learn to partner. Kingdom collaboration is a prerequisite for kingdom advancement. So here's the word of the Lord for you. Find someone. Find someone who believes in you when you do not believe in yourself. Find someone who will pray you out of your pit and praise with you in the palace. Find someone who will tell you no when your flesh tells you yes. Find someone who will push you towards your future and protect you from your past. Find someone who will speak prophetically into your destiny while rebuking the drama in your life. Find someone who will pray with you in the drought and dance with you in the rain. Find someone like Silas with Paul who will sing with you even when you're chained up behind closed doors. Find someone like Jonathan and David who will love you and protect you more than a brother. Find someone like Elijah and Elisha who will walk with you and not be jealous of your mantle. Again, I give you an eternal truth. If two of you agree to ask God for something in a symphony of prayer, my heavenly father will do it for you. For wherever two or three come together in honor of my name, I am right there with them, Matthew 8, 19 to 20. Let me prophetically declare by faith in this conference that God will surround you with people that will help you drag your net. 
Not everyone should have access to your net. Do not grant everyone access to your prayers. Do not grant everyone access to your dreams. Do not grant everyone access to your wounds. Access should be limited to people of integrity who can handle both the blessed you and the broken you. Let me explain. The same disciples that were there when the net broke were present when the net did not break. You need people that are with you on the days the net breaks and on the days it does not. Because there are people that can handle you with an empty net, but they can't handle you with a full net. Then there are people on the flip side that can handle the broke you, but can't handle the bless you. You need to surround yourself with people that can handle both the blessed and the broken you. The you in the valley and the you on the mountaintop. God's going to give you that kind of people. And, and if they're not like that, tell them, get off my net. If you can't be happy for me, get off my net. If you can't celebrate me, get off my net. He's going to surround you with people. And I'm declaring to you prophetically, the nets that broke before will not break this time. And this time you're going to need help managing what God is sending your way. It's going to be so incredible. You may have to drag it, pull it, get a tractor trailer, whatever it takes. But this time you're not letting one thing go. Nothing will be lost. Even as we come out of this pandemic, we're about to see a bunch of people full of faith. Blessed like they have never been blessed before. You're about to see the blessings, the Amos 9.13 version of the blessing. Your head will be spinning around. And wherever you look, blessings will be coming your way. North, south, east, and west. If you receive that for you and your family, say amen. amen. When they got to the shore, they noticed a fire with some roasted fish and bread. John 21.9. Discovering that it was already done. What you've been praying for is already done. I'm going to say that one more time. What you've been praying for is already done. What you've been fasting for, fighting for, forging for, it's already done. When on the cross, Jesus said it was finished, it was done. When on the third day, he resurrected, it was done. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ is Lord, it is done. It is done. It is done. Faith is the key that grants access to the finished work of Christ. Isaiah 43, 13, from eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone. The same words reiterated in John 10, 29. My father has given them to me. He is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them. When God said it is done, it is done. This message, I lived it in this past year. In this past year. Let me be very transparent with you now. I lived the most difficult chapter in my life in the past year of my entire life. Last summer, my family was stricken with this virus. I was primarily asymptomatic because I run. I run to live and live to run. By the butt of the lamb, by the covering and my exercise regimen, I was primarily asymptomatic. By primarily, I mean like 98, 99%. The only hint I had that I had it one day I was in my master bedroom and I was on my way walking in my master bedroom and all of a sudden I got a chill. I thought it was Elvis. <laughs> I'm not making that up, so help me. A chill in my right leg. I'm just walking and all of a sudden I went like, whoa. I went, what was that? You know, and that was, that was it. That was it. My son, Nate, asymptomatic. He's a pastor in our church. My daughter, Evie, gave birth to my daughter, my granddaughter, my first granddaughter, Mila. First granddaughter. And my daughter has always had a little bit low in her white blood count. Not a lot. Just in the low threes. Nothing to write home about. We always kept an eye on it. Nothing egregious ever happened in her life. But it was low. When she gave birth to Mila, the WBCs tanked. So she was compromised. We didn't know this. COVID hit our family. She's a millennial. And... My daughter, who's a millennial, and at that time, I was serving on the National Coronavirus Recovery Commission, so I was in those Zoom calls with those doctors and people constantly, so I knew the science. And all of a sudden, my daughter ends up on a ventilator dying. 
She's a millennial. I'm speaking to the doctor, and the doctor says, first time that I speak to the doctor, and the doctor, because in California, we couldn't see her. We know she was restricted. I see you. And, and she couldn't even breastfeed her baby. It was just crazy. It was mayhem. This is the beginning. This is right. This is July. So the therapeutics weren't there yet. A bunch of stuff wasn't there yet. Uh, the only thing that they had was the idea of antibodies emerging that I referred to last year. Call the doctor. Doctor says, Mr. Rodriguez, your daughter's not doing well. I get that, but what does that mean? Well, she's on a vet. Yeah, I get that part, but that's just an anomaly, right? That means she'll be out tomorrow. Sir Rodriguez, you don't, you don't seem to get it. She's not doing well. I go, what does that mean? She's going to be there for two days. Because in my mind, millennials can't die from COVID. I did the math. It's like 0.000000000001%. How in the world can my daughter be the point zero 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 one percent? So I'm going, no way. The doctor's going like, no, Mr. Rodriguez, there's, and I, and I kept on pushing back. All right, she's going to be there for three days. Mr. Mr. Rodriguez, you don't seem to get it. She's not doing well. What does that mean she's not doing well? Nothing's working, Mr. Rodriguez. What do you mean nothing, nothing's working? So what do you mean she'll be there for a week, Mr. Rodriguez? If your daughter doesn't fight, Awkward pause. That was it. We'll, we'll give you some information as things change. Bloop. So I, this, I'm not, the, no. So no, my family net will not break. And I, I have great empathy for those who had a different outcome. And, and, and I, this is my story in my context of what I went through. So I, I give you room and I have great empathy and I'm sorry, but you're going to have to create room for the fact that I talked to God and I said, no, there's a net. And I know this net will not break. You promised my, you, you told me that my daughter would prophesy. You told me that my daughter would be a messenger, that my daughter was filled with purpose and destiny. You told me that my children and my children's children will bless the nations and advance the kingdom of heaven here on earth so I refused to drink what I was receiving I'm sorry I said no I could have been subjugated by fear I could have been held down by fear I was driving my Jeep Wrangler and I was jacked up which means I was there I was broken I was crying I had my sunglasses on my trucker hat but I got in there and I drove and I said nah 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 I rebuke that word I refuse that word I reject that word I come against that word so this is this let me show you what happened God, so help me God, the spirit of God bears witness to this moment. God, that's it. No, no, not. In the context of this message, my net will not break. 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 So God, I need a little something, something. I need a little something, something. I can't see her. Mom can't see her. her husband can't see her. her. Baby can't see her, but you can I don't have physical access, but the faith and the words coming out of my mouth and the decree and the prayers, you have access. So I said, Lord, I may not have access to her physically, but you do. So I need a little something, something. I said, and I'm, here I am driving. I'm driving. I'm, I'm driving on my Granite Bay Douglas Folsom Boulevard. Here I am. And I go, Lord, right now as we speak, I need this. I need heaven. To right now invade her room. So help me God. No hype. No hyperbole. No exaggeration. And then have the text to prove this stuff. And then I go, Lord, I need you to send your angels in right now. Do whatever you have to do. But I need my baby home. I am your servant. I am anointed by you. 
I am called by you. I've been saved by you and for you, delivered by you and for you, healed by you for you. And I raised my voice. I did all by myself. People could have had my Jeep had no roof. It's California. It's 110 degrees. I don't care who looked at me. We need a church to come back to the place where we don't care what they think about us. We don't care how they ridicule us. We don't care if they make fun of us, but we need to lift our voice and shout unto God with the voice of faith and the voice of triumph. So I said, send the angels. So I kept on driving, took a right turn, Cabot Stallman Boulevard, and went to my place of help and sanctuary. I went to my place. So I ended up at Starbucks. <laughs> and this is what I got. And here's the message. This is why I'm a faith and science guy. This is not hype. This is not emotionalism. It's not exuberance. What are the mathematical, what is the mathematical probability of this happening? That's why you gotta know God is in control. You, you have to understand God has a final word. You have to understand, this is the message I get, Dr. Winston, this is the message. This is why I'm here in this conference, right? Because it prompts me to talk about faith in Christ. This is why, you ready for this? I get this message back from my daughter. My daughter has no idea where I am. She has no idea what I'm doing. I haven't seen her in days. She has no connection of what's happening. Nada, zero, nothing. No connection. This is the message I get from my daughter. She's a millennial. She's in ICU. She's dying on a ventilator. Yet she has access to her cell phone. <laughs> because that's how that generation rose. <laughs> Gen millennials and Generation Z, if you're going to die, you're going to die with your cell phone right next to you. <laughs> it is what it is. And here's the message. Ready? And this is why I came and traveled to share this with you. Dad, comma, I promise you it's not the meds. It's not the medicine. Dad, comma, I promise you it's not the meds, period. Dad, heaven just invaded. <laughs> just invaded my room. Dad, I can't explain it. I know you and mom are going to think I'm crazy, but I promise you, I saw angels coming in and angels going out. I saw angels coming in and I saw angels coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still power in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. At that moment when I received the text, I called my wife. I said, Eva, lo que yo acabo de orar. When I just prayed, Evie just texted. Eva, there's no way she could have known what I said. How can she verbatim text me when I pray to God? I go, honey, my, my wife starts crying and she has COVID and she's crying. She's going, you know what this means? Why well, I go, I know what it means. The turnaround already started and there's not a devil in hell or a demon on earth that can stop what God has started. I'm here to tell you everything God has started in you, everything God has started in your family, with your children and your children's children. When heaven starts it, hell cannot stop it. Lift up your hands. I feel an anointing right now for every person here. For your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. It may not be COVID. It may be something else. But the God of the breakthrough, the faith, that the net of your family, your family net will not break. Somebody shout, my family net will not break. Shout it like you believe it. My family net will not break. 
If you believe that now, give God your best shout of praise. You're about to see a breakthrough. You're about to see a breakthrough. You're about to see a breakthrough. It will not break. 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 Stand with you are standing. 24 hours later. 24 hours después. My daughter has testified, as a matter of fact, TBN did a special on it, a one hour special and it's gone viral and all, everything verifiable, certifiable, don't know, just the beauty of it. My, 24 hours later, this is a call. Mr. Rodriguez. But I already knew. I said, I already knew. No, you missed it. The moment I got that text, every, my demeanor changed. My continence changed. My expression changed. I started walking with a swag again, walking with an attitude again. Are you with me? Because I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know, I know, I know that if God be for us, who can be against us? I know that I know that I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know that I know that I know. So the next day, the next day I get to call Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, he, opening phrase. I truly can't explain this. <laughs> yes, ma'am, what, what, what can't you explain? Asked Mr. Rodriguez with a smirk on the other side of the call. Mr. Rodriguez, the, the level of the turnaround I go, it turned around, your daughter, Mr. Rodriguez. Ma'am, what are you telling me? Your daughter, Mr. Rodriguez, not only is she no longer on a ventilator, she's breathing on her. Oh. And then she says, this, what I'm about to say next, we would not say under normal circumstances, but it is COVID in California. She said, you're gonna have to make preparations with your family. And I went, preparations for what? She went, to pick her up. I went, what do you mean pick her up? In a week, in a month, she goes, no, in 48 hours, y'all need us to pick her up because we need her bed for someone who actually, she's going to be fine, completely fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you faith works. I'm here to tell you what comes out of your mouth matters. I'm here to tell you the faith of Christ in you, with you, and through you will assert the fact that the net will not break. Somebody shout like you believe it that your net will not break. Lift up your hands and praise like you believe it. Shout like you believe it. Worship like you believe it. Your family net will not break. Your faith net will not break. Your financial net will not break. Your ministry net will not break. And never, it will not, it cannot, I, I, it marked me, it marked us, it marked us, my, my daughter, we picked her up, we're, let me land this here, if you stand with me, can the musicians, can I get, is, are, is it a union team? <laughs> Come out here, help me out here. It, We, we, we picked her up in one vehicle, 
God promised me that the net would not break. There were generations before me that our family nets, even with ministerial callings, broke. A legacy coming even from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. There were nets with great calling and purpose and destiny with ministry that broke. And I have seen and experienced every attack from the pit of hell for the purpose of attempting to break my net and the net of our calling in our family. And this was like the last icing on the cake. And the moment we came together and said, no, we're gonna speak into this. We're not gonna bow and acquiesce. Again, I have empathy for those that had a different outcome, but I can't deny what we went through. What happened? Three and a half years before the net broke, three and a half years later, it did not. Same process, different outcome. Same people, same place, same God, same instructions, different outcome. What? What changed? Anybody want to tell me? Faith. And how does our faith grow? Time with him. Time in his presence, time in his word. Time walking with him, time talking with him, living with him. Time praying with him. Time exploring his truths. The time you spend in his presence will determine your capacity to manage his promise. Let me repeat that. The time you spend in his presence will determine your capacity to manage his promise. The outcome will change when your priorities change. You make God first and your net will always be full. You make God first with your time, your thoughts, your money, and your decisions. Make God first and you will never be last. Make God first and you will have more than enough. Make God first and you will live in overflow. In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Proverbs 3, 6, the living Bible. And of course, Matthew 6, 33, Pastor Sam Segundo. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. When your integrity is more important than your influence, nothing can stop you. When you are driven by anointing and not by ambition, nothing can stop you. When your praise is louder than your pain, nothing can stop you. Let me repeat that. When your praise is louder than your pain, nothing can stop you. Let me do it one more time. I want all of America and the world to hear it. When your praise is louder than your pain, nothing can stop you. I'm done. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. When, when your hunger for righteousness is greater than your fear of criticism, nothing can stop you. When what's behind you is under the blood, what's in front of you cannot be stopped. Your net will not break. Please raise your right hand as you stand with me and repeat after me. My net will not break. My faith net will not break. My family net will not break. My holiness net will not break. My shalom net will not break. My health net will not break. My financial net will not break. And the net of my children and my children's children and my children's children's children will not break. Now, if you believe that one, now give them the last shout of praise for the entire country. Thank you.
all of the viewers on the Word Network, we love you, we bless you, we want to remind you that your net will not break in Jesus' name. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Three and a half years later, it did not break. That's what faith does. Three and a half years of pure, unadulterated faith. In his presence, in his word. You just can't help. The outcome will be different. Same God. Same identical process. Same location. Same instructions. Different outcome. You're not where you used to be because you're not who you used to be. It's time the net will not break. The Holy Spirit, and I say that with fear and trembling, I fear God. The Spirit of God instructed me to pray over you and to unleash right now this unbreakable net. In this auditorium right now, and thousands streaming all around the world. You've had nets in your past that broke. Some of you have had relational nets. Some of you have had ministry nets. Some of you have had business nets. You invested, it failed. You started, it failed. You started again, it failed. You've reached the point that you have so many broken nets. Well, why do you think you're today, right here in this place or streaming online? Because the word of the Lord for you right now your net will not break. You make God your priority. You activate the faith in you, for you, through you. Your net will not break. I'm going to do this real quick, real, real quick. I sense the Lord with your eyes closed. Heavenly Father, right now, To the vicarious atoning work of Christ, you have prepared for every single person here and every single person online a brand new net. The catch that is coming is unprecedented. We are about to catch what we've never caught before. Lord, this harvest is truly an unbridled and unparalleled and unprecedented harvest. We understand, we're cognizant of the fact that this time we can't even carry it by ourselves. We need to surround ourselves with the right sort of people. So Lord, thank you now for removing the people you had to remove. <laughs> in order to secure this catch. So right now, we receive this word in its fullness. By the authority of your spirit, we receive it. In the name of Jesus, and we declare by faith through Christ that this time, for the glory of Jesus, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, in the name of Christ, Colossians 3, 17, this time, the net will not break. In Jesus' name. If you come in agreement, say in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, all I want you to do is one thing. I'm not going to ask you to come up. All I'm going to ask you to do is one thing. If this message was 179.3% for you, all I want you to do is take three steps. One, two, three, out of your seat, to the side, to the front, and just out of it and just say, this time, the net will not break. Do it right now. Go do it. Do it right now. This time. This time. This time. Oh, 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 oh. By the way, right there where you're at, let go of your broken net. Pick up your new nets. Pick it up right now. And now with that man, you net, I need you to get ready. There's an anointing upon you for a harvest like you've never seen before. You are about to catch what you've never caught before. If you receive that now, give God your best praise.